So thanks to Janine for setting this up. This is really cool. Um, okay. So I, here's the way, I'll just tell you a little bit about how today's gonna go. I'm gonna talk about that much, and then you're gonna do stuff about that much. So make sure that your, your expectations are correct on that. Looks like we have a, a good number of people, so that really helps. So I'm just gonna walk you through a few little things really quick. Come on in, have a seat. So this is me. I've actually only been at EA for about four years, but I've been making video games, you know, digital games for about, it's okay, for about 15 um, <clears throat> is about right. I, I worked freelance actually for a long time and started at EA in 2007. And I created this workshop for Electronic Arts in 2008. Uh, basically, um, I started at EA, obviously I'd been doing games for a long time. Um, I was actually just turning 40, which means that I'm basically one of the oldest people in that entire industry. Um, and my boss gave me my first assignment. He says, I want you to create a workshop that teaches game design. Go. <clears throat> so I thought, okay, that's going to be hard. So what I did is I called my friend Tracy Fullerton, who is one of the founders of the video game program at USC, who gave me basically the bones of the idea for what we'll do today, which is to, to create a board game, but with some very specific constraints. So it was supposed to be about game design. That didn't happen, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> it turns out teaching game design for board games is very, very fundamentally different from teaching digital game design. And I know that some of you I've, I've been asking around about you know, what, what you all kind of hope for. A lot of people are going into digital games or considering going into digital games. I'd be happy to talk to you about that. I'm also going to forewarn you that what you're going to learn today doesn't have a tremendous amount of application to that. Um, there is some language and some stuff, and I'll, so I'll actually put in more of that than, than I would have um, to talk about things like mechanics and affordances and things like that. But I'll mostly be doing that while you guys are building stuff. So it's more of a coaching thing than a lecturing thing. Here's what is interesting. And <clears throat> when I do this at Electronic Arts, it's kind of like a training thing. And so I'll go to the different um, facilities, and I don't know how, many, how familiar any of you are with EA. It's a big multinational company. We have uh, studios and facilities. So I've actually done this uh, in Asia, in Europe, and Canada, and the US, and several places uh, in some of those. So, uh, which has been pretty fascinating, I have to say. Uh, <clears throat> very different cultural um, sort of dynamics in some cases, especially when we took it to Asia. But um, what, I, what I learned, I, this is going to be roughly the 11th time I've done this, is it doesn't teach you a whole lot about game design. Um, it does teach you a great deal about the creative process, and in particular the creative process when you're working with a group of people. So I'm actually really interested because a bunch of you here are filmmakers, which is similar, right? You can't make a film by yourself very well. You can try, but I imagine that would be pretty tough. Same with a game. Um, so I'd be really interested in your feedback from the film people, like how does this, or, or design firm or whatever, like how does this compare to your own experiences within cr uh, group creativity? Um, so these things have turned out to be super valuable and really cool. Um, <clears throat> so, well, let's back up a little bit. Uh, when I do this at Electronic Arts and it's supposed to be this big training thing, uh, what I usually do is actually give people way too little information, um, throw them off the deep end and watch them fail miserably and then help them come back up, which does two things. It gives you this like great training experience. It also makes me look like a hero. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not going to do that today. I'm actually going to try to see to it that you all don't fail um, in that same kind of way. So, <clears throat> so what we're going to do, we're going to form teams. Um, there you go, that's better. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to choose toys. I was showing this off a little bit earlier. This is my big traveling bag. It makes a lot of noise because there are lots of toys in here. So I collected these over the course of a couple years. I'll just sort of show some of them around. Lots of fun stuff. Just have a look. One of my personal favorites, each side, there's two of these. They're regular six-sided dice, except each side is a whiteboard. Hmm. Here's some Eskimo themes. So right away, these should hopefully get you thinking. I don't even remember what's in this bag. It doesn't really matter who's going to what. I'm going to take them all back. 
Um, once we've formed teams, and we're gonna, I'm going to mix you up different than where you, how you're sitting, uh, each team is going to choose one of these toys. And when you make your game, you have to use the toys as essentially the central figure of your game. Very important. And I'll talk why, about why we do that uh, as, we're, as we're doing it. But the, the essential bit of it is, and I think we have a lot of creative people here, like constraint is crucial to creativity. I really believe that. So just saying, sit down and make a board game. Here's a bunch of pens and pencils and dice. Um, people would fail, all right? And I got to see that. Um, but if I give you a set of little barns, and you immediately start thinking about something, like, okay, that gives me some idea. And, one, and I'll give you a hint too. Um, building a fiction that you're real, building the game around really, really helps. So I've, I've actually got a photograph I'm going to show you in a minute of uh, some people who use these. And this was done in the end of 2009. And they made a game called Foreclosure in which the idea was try not to lose your family farm. <laughs> it was really depressing. Um, but it was actually a very well, well constructed game. <clears throat> and then the last thing you can do is build a game. So that's a picture of uh, the team actually at uh, Maxis, who makes SimCity and Spore and stuff like that, who did this up in uh, Emeryville. Okay, so this is roughly the schedule. Once I, I'm going to put, like I said, I'm going to put you in teams. And, well, I'll, I'll figure that out. You get 45 minutes to make the first version of the game. 45 minutes, no more. 45 minutes goes by really, really fast. Okay? Then we do something fun, which is you'll be in teams, right? One person from your team becomes your team's sort of representative and sits with your game. And then all the rest, rest of the members kind of rotate around the room and you all play each other's games. That's where it really gets interesting. Okay? So we'll do that once. And then you'll say, wow, that sucked. <laughs> and um, I'll talk a little bit about some things that can help you get to the next stage. And we'll just do it again. 30 minutes and then play it again and do it again. And it's great that we have some snacks here because it's going to be pretty constant. <laughs> and then I actually have, I have some stuff that I always discuss at the end, and, and we have some fun with that. So that's it. A few quick rules. No gambling or drinking games, especially gambling. Turns out gambling games are boring. Anyone can make a gambling game. Um, drinking games are just not appropriate. <laughs> Um, like I said, you have to use the toy. Um, just because of our cons time constraints here, you do have to bear in mind that like, the whole thing needs to be roughly playable in 15 minutes. Probably the people who are playing it aren't going to finish it in 15 minutes, and that's okay. But you know, try it when you're making it something that they can get into pretty well in 15 minutes. And the last most important rule. There we go. All right, and that's pretty much it. I will help you, like I said, how are you going to do this in 45 minutes? Um, two really, really easy, simple things. First is learn by doing. So when I do this in, in our groups, and I'm just sort of like, like I said, I'm, getting, I'm cheating you ahead a little bit, um, I usually sit here with a stopwatch and time to see which is the first group to actually start playing something. Like, okay, let's just try that. Okay, that's the phrase that I want to hear. Let's just try that. So this was in this particular go round. These guys were the winner. This was actually the foreclosure game. Uh, and they had their first iteration they were playing in exactly 24 minutes, which put them in very good stead. So at the end of 45 minutes, they actually had something that was reasonably playable. People that waited till 30 minutes, 35 minutes, 42 minutes, um, they're just kind of throwing it together at the last minute. And one of the big lessons here is, especially when it comes to something that is dynamic and involves multiple people, um, you have to just start doing it. Sitting there and thinking about it gets you almost nowhere. So, you know, our design friends are like, yes, that's true. Um, second thing, of course, fail fast. So when you try something, just try it, even if you're not confident in it. Try it honestly and fail as quickly as you possibly can. So if I'm going to um, sort of say these are, these are also two lessons that do translate extremely well into the digital game world, which is we build prototypes religiously, like the stuff that you see in a final product has been iterated 20 times, 25 times, would not be unusual. So we obviously have to build something really quickly and just try it. Um, 
you see lots of nice thick design documentation, which is usually worth like the paper it's you know <laughs> printed on and very little else. And, and the other thing is people that don't understand how to fail fast and fail elegantly, <laughs> fail upward, um, get, into, get into a lot of trouble either because they refuse to admit their failures or they don't identify what's really going on. So <clears throat> create experiments. That's another way of looking at this. Hey, you know what? I wonder what would happen if we tried that. Or if we tried this, maybe it will cause that to happen. And it's amazing how you, know, you think making a board game is simple, but these little dynamic tweaks that you do totally change th how things go. There's no way to do that other than to play with it. So that's your two lessons for your first iteration. Now let's get into better groups. So how many do we have here total? Who's the chosen person from this table? Who's the chosen person from this table? Make a game with pits. Yeah. Okay, so aliens have come to space to take over the world. But it's up to the illegal aliens to save the world because they're undocumented. So space aliens don't know that they're there. They're part of this underground workforce. Okay, so what do we do with the cubes and how do we play? Maybe they should be getting trying to get out of the pig farm. Oh, that's a good idea. And then, you know. Maybe they end up as ribs, or maybe they end up, you know, something else. Some, some are happy. Yeah. Yeah. Do we want to talk? Maybe there's like a Let's talk. We get a board, and we get a list of people have to take over, and then we can roll the dice to see. And what do we see. want? Weapons? Or what? Pitfalls. There's, and the middle is hog yeah. heaven, and we got to get yeah. them out of hog heaven. Hog heaven, which is the organic <laughs> farm grass <laughs> fed. <laughs> Lots of room to roll around. Oh, yeah. Lots of mud and all that good stuff. <laughs> Just start doing yeah, some stuff. Yeah, put a couple random things. I would pause for just a moment. Just pause for just a moment. So you got a little under 10 minutes left. And so that means in just a few minutes, someone's going to play your game. Okay, you're not predisposed to think that it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, what you need to do, you prepare preparation for that. Make sure that you feel like this, you know what the game is, such that one person could explain it in a few sentences as possible. Okay? Because that's what you're going to need to do. All right. Pencils down. Pencils down. And the plain one. Your games are finished and wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Has, has everyone has everyone chosen who's going to be the person who is to stay behind Tess do, Proctor? Do they have to be here the whole time, or yes. can you take turns? Uh, because it's kind of not fair if one person doesn't. Well, get we're going to do this more than game. once, so oh, you can okay. trade off. Right. I mean, you're right. It's not fair, but it yeah. doesn't work very well if we switch around. So. Um, has everyone chosen their person? No. I don't know who is you guys. Yeah. Quickly? Yeah. No, I think you're the first time. Yeah. You. Okay. All right, so who, who, who are, raise your hands, our test proctors. One. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I'm safe. One, two, three, four. Okay. You four people, I'm going to give you a very quick training in game play testing. Okay? Arguably the most important part of any game making, and this applies equally to digital games as Everything that we do, we always play test it against people who don't know anything about our game. It's crucial. Crucial, crucial, crucial. It's like usability testing on steroids. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Sometimes I ask people to use only the written instructions. That's a little bit too mean, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> what I am going to do, though, is ask you to say, pretend like you're written instructions. Okay? So pretend like you're just the box that got bought, and you're not actually the person who's going to coach them through this thing. That's probably going to last for about two or three minutes, and then you're going to start coaching them, and that's okay. But give it at least 